Hi, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and it is July 3rd. Uh, happy 4th of July, a uh, day early, and I am back with another of our 5-Minute Histories videos. And today, we're going to talk about the Robert Long House, and I am standing in the wonderful colonial garden in the behind the Robert Long House. I would be standing in front of the Robert Long House uh, at the corner or near the corner of Anne and Thames Street, uh, but there's a bunch of road construction going on out there, and it is definitely not conducive to shooting a video. Um, so today we're going to talk about the Robert Long House, and I have to start by thanking a friend of mine and the president of the Preservation Society uh, that owns this building, um, David Gleason, for teaching me so much about uh, this house and its importance in Baltimore and American history. Um, all right, so Robert Long uh, was a, uh, a, a gentleman from Pennsylvania. He moved to Baltimore in the 1760s um, and bought three parcels of land from Edward Fell, one of the Fell family members um, who plotted out Fells Point beginning in the 1730s. Um, on one plot of land, he, per, he built this house, 28 feet by 28 feet. On the second plot, he built a warehouse. He was a merchant, um, after all. And then on the third plot, he had a garden, which is kind of interesting, because here we are in a city, an urban area, on the water, um, uh, and yet still the need for a colonial garden, very much growing fruits and vegetables um, for his family. We don't know a lot about uh, Robert Law. Long, but we do know that he contributed to the American Revolution. Um, he was a merchant, uh, apparently in the 1760s. He made a bunch of money. He lost a bunch of money. He made a bunch of money again. By 1774, um, so sort of eight or nine years into his uh, stay in Baltimore, he was wealthy enough to call himself a gentleman. So he was up and coming. Um, and he was, uh, he was trading all sorts of stuff and got to know a number of people, including the governor of Maryland. And when war broke out in 1776, uh, one thing that he did is that uh, the, he got the governor to give him a special decree that allowed him to go and commandeer wagons, horses, food, um, and take them up to General Washington and his troops um, in New Jersey. It was winter, and uh, the uh, rivers were frozen, and Washington's troops were literally starving. And so Robert Long uh, uh, used his sort of connections uh, to procure wagons and horses and food and went up there and helped save the, uh, save the army um, from perishing, uh, doing his part for the revolution. Um, after the war, uh, uh, Robert Long, like a lot of folks in his shoes, um, uh, had contributed but didn't get really paid for it. So he went down to Annapolis and pleaded with the governor and the General Assembly, um, said, hey, you know all those horses and wagons that I kind of procured? but I, I actually spent a lot of my own money. Um, can I get some compensation? And in Maryland and other states, a number of Tories, the colonists who supported the British, had their lands confiscated. And Long got a number of those. That was kind of his payback. Um, he ended up ending up owning several properties in Maryland, one in Virginia, um, and moved from here in the 1890s uh, to, I guess, a bigger estate and house uh, up near Herring Run today. So over the years, this house served a lot of purposes. It continued to be a house after Long sold it. Um, in the late 1800s, as immigrants were flooding into Baltimore and, and into Fells Point in particular, um, this house became a boarding house. Um, in uh, right around 1900, as manufacturing along the waterfront was picking up, this house became known as something as the uh, Patapsco Marine Sealing and Stevedore Company, uh, making, I presume, uh, ships parts or ships caulking. Um, uh, and, and then by the 1950s and 60s, it was in the crosshairs of the highway. The city, state, and federal highway planners are, were proposing to build a highway through Fells Point, and that uh, definitely has to be the subject of another video. Um, and this house was in the way. And back then, uh, an organization called the Society for the Preservation of Federal Hill Montgomery Street and Fells Point formed. Um, I'm proud to say that Baltimore Heritage helped in that effort. Uh, the Preservation Society uh, and Baltimore Heritage, before my time, um, uh, did all sorts of things. They sued to try to block the highway, um, and they got uh, Fells Point listed on the National Register of Historic Places that ultimately was what saved, uh, saved the neighborhood from becoming on-ramps and off-ramps. And I want to talk particularly about a gentleman who was instrumental in that effort, and his 
His name was Bob Eaney. Um, I got the privilege to know Bob uh, at the end of his life. He passed away several years ago. But Bob in the 1960s uh, was a window designer at one of the stores uh, downtown on Howard Street, uh, but also a Fells Point lover and a Fells Point advocate, probably its chief advocate. Um, he went around taking pictures and doing research of every building in Fells Point to get it listed on the National Register. And he came to this building, and over the years, this building had been changed by, with various uses. It had a third story added onto it at one point. It, uh, the front was covered in this crazy tar material. And Bob peeled off a little piece of tar uh, and made some really remarkable discoveries. So let's do a little uh, sort of architectural archaeology with Bob Eaney. Um, the first thing he discovered was that the bricks behind that tar were really special. They are not your regular Baltimore bricks. They're they were handmade in the 1760s, um, and they are not the same size. So if you look at the front carefully, you'll notice that it does not have that regular pattern of a Baltimore brick row house. It has an irregular pattern. But the masons were really, really skillful, and by, um, by uh, crafting in larger joints between the bricks, um, they make it, they sort of trick your eye, and they make it seem as if it's it's more regular than it actually is, the pattern that is. Um, so Bob recognized that this was a really old house. The other thing he recognized is that there was a decorative layer of uh, a bricks, a course of bricks, um, below the windows on the second floor. And he scratched his head and he said, wait a minute, uh, that's supposed to be above the window on the second floor. That's sort of uh, between the window and the roof. Why is it below the window? And he realized that uh, that was where there was a pent roof, uh, a little shed-like roof uh, above the front door that would shelter people coming and going. Um, and he realized that that's not common in Maryland. Definitely not common in Baltimore. That's something you would find in Pennsylvania. Well, guess where Robert Long was from? Pennsylvania. Maybe he brought down a little bit of Pennsylvania architecture uh, here to Fells Point. Um, so with the Preservation Society blocking the highway, ultimately, this building was saved. In, seven, in 1976, excuse me, on the bicentennial of the uh, American Revolution, the colonial dames in Maryland uh, uh, put in an exhibit of furniture of the period of Robert Long, the 1760s. Um, uh, unfortunately, the house had had an enormous fire. The Preservation Society had restored that. Uh, and in the 1990s, it had another fire, unfortunately, on the second floor. Uh, but back to the rescue, the Preservation Society comes again and, is re and restores it up to where it is today, which is uh, a wonderful place. I encourage you to come and visit uh, when we're able to again. Um, but even today, if you, uh, we can't get in, but I would, uh, I would say if you want to come and see an absolutely charming garden uh, behind and surrounding a 1760s house, uh, come on over. The gate is open. And as we celebrate and think about uh, the 4th of July, I'll encourage you to, yes, think about the luminaries that we traditionally associate with uh, the independence and our fight for independence, but also think about the, the more common folks like Robert Long, without whom we could not have done it. With that, I'm going to say uh, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.